Good morning, everybody. It is a joy to see you in the house of the Lord. Yes, would you stand with us as we lift our voices? Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's one. Father, this, this morning, God, we are so thankful, God, for this beautiful Sunday morning in the month of May. Father God, I pray, Lord, that those that are listening by uh, live stream today, I pray, God, that you will be in their day, God, you'll bless them today, God, you'll touch them in a very special way today. And those that are here in live audience, I pray today that, God, whatever is said, whatever is done, whatever... Uh, Whatever we do, God, we just do it all for the glory of God. And I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Would you turn and greet someone? today if you're here for the first time uh we'd like you to uh text the word welcome to 509-309-0958 if you would do that please and that'll get you in the loop of what's going on in our church what's happening things are happening uh coming up on a, on a crazy summer but uh text the word loop to 509-0958 if you would this morning sunday morning worship two services 9 a.m had a good service this morning good good word today good worship is this always awesome and then, of course, this morning. And reservations are no longer required. Can you say amen? Yeah, okay. Uh, one service coming up, 1030. So as you know, that once a quarter, there is a fifth Sunday. And we decided that on that fifth Sunday, we would combine the 9 o'clock and the 1030 service into one service. And so this one's coming up on Sunday, May 30th. And so we hope that you'll join us as we gather together as one body, worshiping together in one service. Amen. Amen. And the Deborah anointing. So ladies, we are starting back to our, <coughs> excuse me, weekly Bible study. And we are going to be going over the Deborah anointing. Um, and our books are in. If you ordered them, please see Kaylani after the service. If you haven't ordered them yet, there's plenty of time. Please see Kaylani after the service. Uh, let her know you need a book. We're going to start tomorrow evening at 630. If you don't have a book, don't worry about it. We're going to be just kind of going over an introduction tomorrow. So please come and join us at 630. Amen. Thank you so much. And our old church camp out September 10th through the 12th. Harris Park, a call uh, reservations. You see it on the big screen. Um, reserve with Courtney. And the spots are filling up. They are. Yes, yeah. So it's been a cool thing. And then, uh, yes. So we begin um, our chosen study tonight um, at 6 o'clock here in the sanctuary. And we are going to be watching episode one. I've been informed by uh, UPS that um, 
The DVD and the study guides will be delivered this afternoon. And if that does not happen for some reason, um, we have another way to show the first episode and we will get the study guides to you afterwards. Amen. All right.
Sovereign in the mountain air, sovereign on the ocean floor, with me in the calm, with me in the storm. Sovereign in my greatest joy, sovereign in my deepest cry, with me in the dark, with me in the storm. of my life from beginning to the end I can trust you in your never failing love you work everything for good God whatever comes my way I will trust you in your everlasting arms all the pieces of my life from beginning to trust you in your never failing love you work everything for good God whatever comes my way I will trust you I will trust you my Jesus this morning.
Father, we thank you this morning. We worship your precious holy name. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. As our hearts commune with you and our souls are fed and our spirits, Lord God, grow in this time that you've given to us. We thank you for each day of life. We thank you for each moment that you give to us, even in the midst of the storms. We praise you, precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. That God, we can worship a God of love, not a God of vengeance. A God of hope, not a God of fear. And a God of joy that strengthens us in every day of our life. Father, as we trust in you and as we have hope in you and as we believe in you and as we call upon your name and as we worship you, Father, thank you. Thank you. We humbly come before you this morning with thanksgiving. And we praise you, Father, for every gift that you give to us and every answer to prayer, whether that the answer of prayer that we're asking for or the answer of prayer that is according to your will, Father. And that's how we need to pray. For this time is so short, Father, and when that time comes that we're called home, we go through that, that instrument of death, not for an end, but for a beginning, Father, eternity. We're all on our, our way home, Lord Jesus, in this life. We're all headed home, Father. And Lord, it's how we walk this journey, how we do life together, and how we live as a man or woman of Christ. Makes the statement to our brothers and sisters that we're faithful that we truly believe and that you know our hearts, Lord. So as Pastor Randy comes and brings our request and our petitions, supplications to you this morning, Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you continue to do in our lives as children of Almighty God. Thank you. So, Lord, we thank you, God, this morning. God, as we pray for our nation today, Lord God, we lift them up in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for Brother Steve Beecroft today, God, and the infection, Lord, he touches his body in the name of the Lord. And God, for my brother Bruce, God, that's still on hospice in Spokane, I pray, God, Lord, that you would touch him, Lord, touch his spirit, touch his mind. I pray, God, bring someone his way, God, to minister to him and just let him know their hope. In Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for Tina Cal's mom, Christy, Lord, that you would touch her today. God, I pray for Miriam, for continued healing, God, for Brother Roy, for continued healing, God, this cancer. For little Cash, God, you would touch his little body, his kidney issues in the name of Jesus. And Brother Sean, God, that you would touch him, God, and give him physical strength, God. Lord, Brother Ed, boss, his sister, and Brother God, continue healing. And Kimberly, God, for healing and strength, God, in her body today. God, for all the law enforcement today, God, you would touch them. And my son, God, and Jimmy, Lord, and as they serve the, their cities, I pray, God, you would protect him, keep him safe. I pray, God, and all the Department of Corrections, God, that are, God, up there on the hill, I pray, God, you would keep them safe, I pray, in the name of the Lord. God, for President Biden and all the officials, God, that God, that you would give them wisdom, God, give them understanding. <clears throat> God, I pray in the name of Jesus and for, God, all of our military, Lord, you would touch them, I pray. Keep them safe, God, uh, as they protect our borders, God, I pray. This great nation, keep them uh, safe in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I, I was, we were reading, singing, that, singing that song about, you know, a sovereign you know, and and how many believe, believe that God is sovereign this morning in your life? You know, He said, in all the pieces. You know, and, and today, you know, people they're broken in so many ways, and maybe uh, maybe emotionally they're broken, maybe spiritually they're broken, maybe physically they're broken. 
But see, in all those pieces, God is still in control of your life. Can you say amen? See, it doesn't matter what you're going through right now or what you're about to go through or what you've just come through. I still believe that even though we're broken, see, when we're broken, that's the, that's the greatest time to be a blessing. Because see, there's so, many, there's so much more of your life to go around to touch other people's life. So the next time you feel yourself, you're in a broken state, God, just say, God, you know what? That's a lot for me to go around to bless somebody else. See, there's, uh, you see, you see what I'm saying? There's always a blessing in brokenness. See, we are blessed to be a blessing. We are broken so that God can flow and use us as much as he can. But see, that's up to you and I. See, if, if, if we want to be used of God, we got to say, God, no matter if I'm broken, you can still use me. God, if I'm on the mountaintop, God, you can still use me. See, it doesn't matter where you're at in this state of life, you're still in the control of God Almighty. Amen. I'm just thanking the Lord today. Praise the Lord. so good. It is such a joy to, to see you all here this morning, and I'm looking forward to our, our uh, one service coming up here on May the 30th, and to be able to uh, come together. Eventually, we're going to be doing Wednesday night dinners again, and uh, in those dinners, uh, it brings both services together. When I did this over at Blue Mountain Community, we started with about 25 people, and by the time we were through, there were 250 people on Wednesday night. And people would walk in and they'd go, oh, are you new to the church? No, I go to the first service. I go to the second service. So they really didn't have a chance to get to know each other, so I really hope that we can do that. And tonight, come on, let's all turn out for the starting of The Chosen, uh, season one. How many of you watched it already? Have you had a chance? You haven't? How many of you haven't seen it? Oh, you are in store for a great treat. And uh, I believe Kehlani... It's going to be an hour. Is it an hour? We're starting at 6.30, right? No, we have an hour episode, but we don't have commercials. Okay, so we don't have commercials. So uh, uh, tonight, a couple of other things I want to just share with you. Thank you so much for your faithful giving. We have come through and are coming through still with this whole pandemic, and you notice that we have our offering uh, boxes on you. We're not going back to, to the ushers passing them around. Um, you guys have been faithful we are going to start putting our budget in the bulletin when we start putting the bulletin back out so that you can see really what, what's, what's needed. I, I've had people say, well, what, what, what's needed? What's, you give what God lays on your heart out of an abundance, not out of the last of what we've got. And so I, I just, I'm supposed to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness, and thank you for giving and believing in what God has called us to do. Third, but not least, but not last, is... Um, last week, the uh, city of Walla Walla handed me the keys to the amphitheater, and uh, in their, their, their thinking, um, uh, which is very good, hi everybody online, um, we uh, will be in there for two weeks. Uh, we have two weeks to go in and do some cleanup, and then we'll be meeting with uh, council, and uh, all of the process will take place. All of that to say is six of us were there this last Saturday, and we cleaned a huge area in the front as you enter into it. It, it kind of looked like Sleeping Beauty's castle where the, the Wicked Witch had put a curse on this place and blackberry bushes and everything. And so six of us next Saturday, we're going to start between, we're going to start, some will be there at six. We'll start at seven, between seven and eight o'clock. 
And we want to spend about three hours in there because if it's hot like it was yesterday, you just can't stay past 12. There's not any shade or anything like that. And so we're going to spend three, three or four hours up till about noontime if we can. And uh, we'd like to have about 20, 25 people. If you can take a couple of hours next Saturday, please come on out. Meet us over at the amphitheater. Um, uh, we'll supply lunch. We'll take care of lunch. Um, and uh, it's just God is, God is still at work with this whole thing, and I'm excited about it. Uh, they're, they're telling us that the decisions are made, that we should be able to get full occupancy of it for different events and different things, and we've not shared that very much on the Internet, but we are really believing that God has his hands all over this church. We may be a little church, but you mentioned New Beginnings Chapel, and people don't call us a homeless church anymore. They call us a church that's out there reaching into the community and making a difference, and that's my prayer, and that excites me as I hear that. So thank you. And for you this morning, this message is, is really a message of continuing to grow, continuing to uh, feed our soul. And uh, m many years ago, I used this statement, and I will say to you, some of you have not heard this statement, and your eyes will get big and your eyebrows will go up when I say this, but I'm going to say it to you. You do not have a soul. I love that, Rebecca. Your response was perfect. You do not have a soul. <laughs> oh, Loretta's looking, what church have I gotten myself into? You don't have a soul, everybody. You are a soul. You have a body. You are a soul that continues to live on long after this body is gone. And God is telling us this morning, how do, we, how do we feed this soul? We feed this soul through the word of God. Many years ago, started what was a new cliche, a new statement, uh, primarily in the African-American community called soul food. Soul food. It was chitlins. It was chicken. It was turnips. It was, it was oh, let's see, what else did they have in there? It was um, anything that had Crisco in it was, was soul food. But I want to talk today about another kind of food that God has for us. There is help from God's word, amen? There is help from God's word and how it nourishes our soul every day. So I'm going to invite you to stand with me as we turn to this scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. And to all of you who are online, thank you so much for joining us. And I hope that these words come through so that you can see them as well. And it reads, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances for what? This is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Amen. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you. Listen to this. The one who calls you. You're called out from this world. We're called out from this world. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Father, thank you for your word this morning, and thank you that we base this message on this scripture and what the other scriptures that we're going to hear from today will mean to us and speak to our hearts about Reminding us, Father, that we are children of a living God and that you love us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so again, we humbly come before you carefully, carefully to interpret the word of God as you would have us interpret it today in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, amen, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Man, it's easy to distinguish the body from the soul. Why is that? Is because you can see the body. You can see the body. It's visible. But it's really more difficult to, to see the, the differences between the spirit and the soul. Because both of them are invisible. And the only way, everybody, to distinguish between the soul and the spirit is through the word of God is through the Word of God. You've heard me say this. i heard me say it many times. The more we're into the Word, the more the Word of God is in us. And so we read this morning from Hebrews 
For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit. Amen? To the dividing of the soul and the spirit. Someone said the mind is amazing. It starts working when you were born and it shuts down when you get up and you speak to people in a crowd. Your mind is a control center of your life. Our mind is a control center for our life. How is your thoughts? How are your thoughts today? How many of you have flown out of SeaTac Airport? All, almost all of us. We've flown out. Do you know that there are many uh, uh, control towers that are there? Did you know that they're all linked together electronically? So they're, they're speaking to each other. Do you know there's almost 2,000 flights that go out of that place a day? And every single one of those flights have to connect with the control tower to get permission to take flight to get their, their, their flight instructions to proceed. And so I ask you again, do you control your thoughts or do you let your thoughts control you? A little girl said to her mama, Mama, I had such a great day today. And the mama said, why did you have a great day, honey? She said, because yesterday my thoughts were pushing me around and today I pushed my thoughts around. Do our thoughts control us or do we control them? Having a healthy soul is to practice, is to practice mind control. And I'm not talking about, about you know, mind brainwashing. I mean, allowing your mind to be controlled by the word of God. Amen? To be controlled. That's okay. You can say amen. Or you can say, no, pastor, I disagree. Or you can even say, be careful, pastor. You're, you're treading on light ground here. But do you agree that the, the, the control of, the, of, of, our, of our minds, it comes from the word of God and by the spirit of God instead of by our emotions. And man, we let our emotions control us, don't we? We let our emotions, we're high, we're low, we're here, we're there. We're all over the map. When we let our emotions control us. The word of God and the spirit of God are what has to be so cemented in us, guys and gals, as we travel this journey, as we're on this process, as we're going through life. Someone or something will control your mind. It's just a matter of who or what. Amen? It's just a matter of who or what. So I want to talk about how we surrender our mind to God. How do we surrender with all of the stuff that's bombarding us and hitting us? You know, we, we did a, a marriage study one time, and a woman's mind goes like this. A man's mind, he goes to his quiet space. He goes to his... I want to say boo-boo box, but <laughs> nothing box. And a woman is, that's why I count on all the ladies in my life in this church to make things happen. When your thoughts mislead you, I believe God can renew your mind, amen? I believe that God can renew our mind. Our minds can mislead us. Has that ever happened to you? Our minds can mislead us. And any time you see an optical illusion, it is an illusion of what really is not there. What is really not there. There's a picture of two lines that, that look like one is longer than the other. I was going to put up, but I said it. They look longer. One line is longer. But if you measure them, they're exactly the same length. They're exactly the same length. If we're thinking the wrong way, it's going to lead us into wrong thinking. If we think we see something that's not, that's, that's real, you better test it in the Word of God. You better, you better seek to see if it's of God or if it's of this world. 
There's a famous saying from Alcoholics Anonymous. And I wish I could tell you who the man or woman was that wrote it, but it's anonymous. And it goes like this. It's not our drinking, but our thinking that makes us stinking. Stinking thinking gets in the way a lot of the times when things are not necessarily as they appear to be. And the enemy loves to play tricks on our mind. He loves to play tricks on our mind. Because see, I believe bad thinking leads to bad behavior. Bad thinking leads to bad behavior. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. Whatever you think about the most, I believe you're going to become. Whatever you think about the most, I believe you're going to become. But it is true, you become what you think about most. If you allow your thoughts to think a lot about worrying, you're probably going to become a worrier. If you uh, think about fearful things and are so fear, you're probably going to tend to be fearful. And if you think of lustful thoughts, you're going to give way to adultery. It starts in the mind. We give birth to it, and then it brings forth sin. And what does sin bring forth? It brings forth death. God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, gives us supernatural abilities to control our minds. He gives us supernatural ability to control our thoughts. When you have thoughts of worry, why not go to the Word and use a scripture like 1 Peter? I'm casting all my cares on the Lord because I know He cares for me. When you have thoughts of fear, how about... Psalms 27, 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If we surrender our will to the Lord, the, the innermost parts of, of who we are, of our soul, he will renew our mind. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this word, Romans 12, 2 says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test. You, 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 me, we will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Scriptures that we can go to the soul bank with. We can fight the enemy with. We don't have to be bound and controlled by these fearful, lustful, angry thoughts that, that control us at times. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, 11, that when he was a child, what? He thought as a child. But when he became a man, he put away childish things. You see the windows on our sanctuary walls here. It reminds me of... Though I see through a glass dimly, one day I will see clearly. God wants to feed our souls, everybody. He wants us to become strong men and women of God that we can take the word of God and, and we can get into it and we can, we can decipher it and we can interpret it and we can apply it to our lives. But if we're not into the word, how will we understand what the word of God says when we face these worrisome, fearful Thoughts that come into our minds. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Do not conform any longer than to the patterns of this world. When you were a child, you thought as a child. You become a man or a woman. Think. Think as an adult. Think as a man and woman of God. And that's what happens when God renews our minds. Amen? That's what happens when God renews our minds. We stop thinking like the world thinks, and we start thinking, you ready for this? I love this, with a mind of Christ. Is that not what we should be striving for? Is that not what we should be striving for? Danny, I'm expecting it. Yes, that's right. Because we are to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. We are to be an image of Jesus Christ. We are to walk in the light of Christ and allow that light to shine through us. That others can see Christ 
in us. Number three is when you're emotionally exhausted, Jesus can refresh your soul. That's the encouraging start of it. When you're exhausted, the enemy wants to try to tear you down, destroy you, disrupt you, and make you ineffective. But my God, my God can refresh my soul. Your God can refresh your soul. And guess what? It's the same God. It's the same God. Just as our bodies get tired, our souls can get weary. Have you ever thought about that? Our souls can become weary as well. Our bodies can experience pain. So can our souls. So can our souls. It's just a different kind of pain. Soul pain and exhaustion is harder to pinpoint than physical exhaustion and pain. Physical exhaustion and pain, what do you do? You go to the doctor. You get some medicine. You maybe have surgery. It's a little harder to see this, this exhaustion and pinpoint it within the soul. Some emotional pain is unavoidable. It's unavoidable. You cut your finger, you're going to hurt. You smash your thumb, you're going to hurt. I'm just looking around at different people who have done things. You, you, you break a toe, it's going to hurt. Unavoidable emotional pain. Just as when someone dies in our life. There's going to be grief. And I, I, I did a service a Friday for a gentleman, 68 years old, who passed away. How do you put into 15, 20 minutes a life of 68 years? You know me. I got 15, 20 minutes to speak. It's hard for me to get it all in here on a Sunday morning, let alone 68 years in somebody's life. We grieve when someone passes away. When there's a divorce in, in our marriage, when we lose our jobs, when we have rejection, depression, change, all these produce emotional pain. But some soul pain isn't as obvious. It masks itself into suffering and hurt, and we have to ask, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? A friend of mine, when his wife would... Get after him about being grumpy, and she'd say, what is wrong with you? He'd look at her and says, when I figure it out, I'll make sure I let you know. We can't pinpoint it. We don't know what's going on. We're overwhelmed. Here's God's promise when you are emotionally overwhelmed. Matthew 11, 28 and 29, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He doesn't say, I may, I might, it could happen. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. The Bible talks many, many times about the soul. About the soul. And rest in the Lord. And if any of you know about yokes and putting them on, they would take the oxen and They'd plow the fields. and This is talking about being equally yoked with God, with, with, with Jesus Christ, and letting him take the weight, letting him take the burden, letting him lead as we travel on this life when we're overwhelmed. I've used this um, illustration of St. Francis of Assisi, and he, he, the statement that he says... Uh, share the gospel with everybody and use words if necessary. Okay. He also pastored a church in South Africa. Did you know that? And here's what he says about this yoke. Any other burden oppresses and crushes you. I don't think I have this. No. Any other burden oppresses and crushes you, but Christ's yoke takes weight off of you. Any other burden weighs you down, but Christ gives you wings. If you take a bird's wings away, you might seem to be taking weight off of it, but the more weight you take off, the more you tie it down to the earth. Give it back the weight of its wings, and you will see how it 
flies. The yoke of Christ is not a burden. It sets us free and allows us to fly. The freedom of the Lord. The freedom of the Spirit of God in us. The freedom of this walk. Sometimes it seems like it's burden, but that's where the enemy is trying to oppress us and to cast weight upon us. But Christ lifts that weight, gives us that freedom, gives us the power to, to, to go, do things supernaturally. When we're in the yoke with Jesus, he refreshes our soul by revealing himself to us. Revealing himself to us through his word, through you guys. I see Christ in you all the time. I see the witness of Christ. I see the light. I see the joy. I see the strength. I see the power. I see the youth of our young people growing and becoming stronger in their faith when we work together side by side. See, they're not the generation of tomorrow. They're the generation of today. God is raising up an army in, in you young people on the back row that can make a difference with kids, young people who don't know Christ. And we hear every day how young people are taking their lives and, and ending their lives because they don't think it's worth living. How can a 13-year-old take his life? What is so tra traumatic in a life that he doesn't feel like it's worth living? That's why I say speak into the lives of our young people. Give them hope. Give them promise. Give them the power of the Holy Spirit. Teach them that they will teach generations to come. Feed their souls by the word of God. Speak life into them so that they'll be able to speak life into others. Healthy habits can nourish our souls. Healthy habits can nourish our souls. I ask this question, how's your soul today? How is your soul today? There's a direct correlation between health of your soul and your physical. There is a direct correlation between your, your soul and your overall satisfaction of life. As your soul goes, so goes your life. Amen? As your soul goes, so goes your life. There's a ministry called Soul Care. Soul Care has been around for some time, and they have five pillars of, of soul strength. Architecturally speaking, when you put pillars up, they hold the roof up. And it gives more space underneath for things to take place. And so pulling these today, number one is daily prayer. You know I talk about prayer all the time and, and about being uh, uh, um, intercessory prayer warriors. And, well, with this, we need to allow our minds to focus on God through prayer. Now, sometimes I'm in prayer and my thoughts go other places and I think all sorts of other thoughts, but i got to focus back on Christ in my prayer. I love it when you guys talk to each other through the service and shake your head and, and then I'm not the only strange one when I'm praying. But to focus on God in my prayer, the healthiest Christians that I know have developed a habit of regular time of prayer each day. Okay, so I'm going to challenge you to set a time of 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I'm not saying an hour. I'm not saying, you know, I'm saying take 10 minutes and set it aside for prayer. Pastor, I cannot fill 10 minutes with prayer. Listen, praying for me would fill your 10 minutes of prayer right there. Taking 10 minutes. Are you guys all shaking your head? Yeah. Take 10 minutes. And if it's hard for you to do it, use this acrostic. A-C-T-S, Acts. And what it says is, we start out, and you've seen that we're doing this in our prayer time. Adoration, praise, adoring God for what he's done, the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. He is, a, he is the God of creation and the son of God, and, and we are to adore him, and we are to praise him for who he is. Then we move to confession, which is something that we have not done during our prayer time, confessing our sins and asking the Holy Spirit to reveal to us things within our lives that we're not aware of so that we can confess them to him. He's forgiven us of our sins, but he wants us to acknowledge that we're still in this fallen world and we're still going to fall and we're still going to slip and we're still going to make mistakes and acknowledge that and say, thank you for being my God. Reveal to me those things which I have not submitted to you and allow me to be that man, that woman of God you called me to be. So confessing our sins. Then Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Are you thankful for what God has done in your life, even in the midst of the storms? 
many have gone through divorces. Many, there are those who have lost children. There are those who are, 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 are struggling, have struggled at times with your finances. But are you able to come back and say, thank you, God, for I know you're there. I don't know how people get through this without Christ. I don't know how they function without Christ. And so thanking him, thanking him for what he is, has done, is doing, and is continuing to do in your life. He loves you. He saved you. Are you thankful for salvation? Are you thankful for the gift of Jesus Christ? Do you thank him more and more for that, or does it just come once in a while? Thanking him every day. Then finishing with supplication. Supplication, which means supply. Ask God to supply the needs of your brothers and sisters. Intercessory prayer. That's what an intercessory prayer warrior. Praying for others, for their needs, and then bringing your needs. Yours are the last. Bringing your needs before the Lord and praising Him. And I believe He will answer, He will speak, He will bless you in the only way that God knows how to do it. Don't ask me how God does it. I don't have the mind of God. I'm striving for the mind of Christ. And that takes a whole lifetime. But the, the mind of God, why things happen the way they do, I don't know. But we should be praising and thanking Him, and He will bless. He loves to bless us. Amen. He loves to bless us. Another way to improve your prayer life, I think, I, I, I just challenge you, keep a prayer journal. Keep a prayer journal. Write, write down your prayers as letters to God. You go back and read. We did that for a number of years with the life books. And, and to, to be able to uh, uh, read scripture together and then we would, uh, uh, just, a, just a passage, find a passage in the Bible. And, and read it, and then how it applies. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't a life journal. It was called SOAP. We find the scripture, um, how, it, um, uh, how, we, how we look at it, how we uh, um, interpret it, and then how it applies to our lives, and then we pray for that scripture. And you go back and you read those over the year, and it's really powerful. It gets you through the Bible in about a year. Um, and you can, you can go online, and you can find the SOAP, uh, devotionals, and it'll give you scriptures every morning and carry you, you know, through the rest of the year. Um, and, and in keeping a journal and writing letters, um, it reminds us of what we're saying to God. Are we repetitive or are we, are we talking to him as a friend? New, every day. Thanking him, praising him, worshiping him, lifting up his name. Keep a prayer journal on your computer. If you don't want to write it, keep it on your computer, on your tablet. But be mindful of what you're doing in your prayer life. Seek counsel through a, a godly friend, someone who is close and you trust and you, you can walk with. If you have someone walking with you through the tough times of life, this is essential for soul growth. Ruthie, I pick on you. Was it not essential when Barbara passed away? If you would have not have had... Christian sisters walking with you. It would have driven you to drink. I mean, literally. And it has. It's taken people out into the world. I need you as family. I need you as, as friends. When I'm hurting, when I'm, I can call you, and I know you're praying for me. And I hope that you know that as well as with me. But if you don't have a friend, in order to have a friend, you've got to be a friend first. So if you'd like to find a friend to walk with you, be a friend to someone else and allow yourselves to do life together. You, I keep talking about this, doing life together, doing life together. And so there are times when people need to lean on each other. They need to lean on each other and share. And if you don't have a close friend like that, find someone that you trust, a mentor. I have five mentors in my life, five men who spoke life into me. And one woman, my mama. All of these people shape who I am today. Spoke life into me. And when I was down, I could go to them. I could talk with them. And they would give me words of wisdom. I trusted them. I trusted them. Find somebody that you can, a counselor, a, a spiritual advisor. And there's always been a stigma. I'm not going to seek counseling because counseling's only for crazy people. Well, I'm crazy in love with Jesus, so I guess I, it fits me. To seek, what is it? To seek counsel of godly men and women. 
Surround yourself with them. Grow in who you are in Christ. Counseling is for wise people. It's for anyone who's going through a tough time and needs someone to help them through it. Have you ever needed that? Have you ever needed someone to help you through a tough time? Are you thankful for that? Have you thanked the Lord for those men and women who have been placed in your life at that time? And reading and meditating on Scripture. Here we are again. Here's Pastor back into the Word. Word of God in you. The Word of God. You in the Word. The Word of God. Those who have healthy souls also make a habit of having a daily time of personal Bible study. A daily time of personal Bible study. But I just, I tell you this morning, please don't read the Bible like a novel or a magazine. And I read magazines backwards. I don't recommend you do that because you read the end of the story and then everything else, it's kind of crazy. So start reading the Word. Have a time where you are in the Word. We should read the Bible like they're love letters from God. Love letters from God. There's some pretty tough times in the Old Testament of love letters. So as you're reading through them, say, this is what the Lord really laid on my heart. He says, read between the lines, Tim. Because everything I am saying and all the blood, the guts, and all that stuff that's in the Old Testament, and this is going to sound strange. It's because I loved my children. And I allowed them to go through those things because they disobeyed. They went against what I told them they needed to do. John said, don't take anything away from this word. You know why? Because it's going to cause chaos. It's going to cause frustration. And that's what happened with the children of Israel. They went their own way. They decided to do their own thing. And what happened? It was chaotic. And it brought death. That's why that scripture says only what's done for Christ will last. Every other thing is going to fade away. Do you believe that? Then we better be in the word every day so that the word can be in us. Read it as though you want to get to know the person who wrote it. Read the word of God as, as though you're reading Gmail. God's mail. You're getting to know him. You're getting to experience him. For is solitude and silence. There's something about these monks, you know, taking this vow of silence. I think they're on to something. I'm not telling you to go join a monastery, you know, or, or to, to uh, take, you know, a monk's stand, joining, you know, um, a vow of silence. But there's great value in solitude and silence. Isn't there? There's great solace. Do we live in a fast-paced, very wired world right now? All of the crazy stuff that is going on, the noise, the static. Is it ever hard for you to hear the voice of God? Everything that's going on? Is it hard to hear the voice of God? Hmm. What's God been saying to you lately? What has God been saying to you lately? And if you say, I don't know, then very possibly we may not be listening. We may have all of the other stuff going on in our minds and in our, in our lives. I'm going to challenge you again. Take a 20-minute gadget vacation. Take a 20-minute gadget vacation. Put those phones down. Put Facebook off. Turn it off. I'm just saying 20 minutes. No, I'm not saying forever. I'm just saying for 20 minutes. Stop reading what everybody else is doing in their life all around the world every time you take up your phone. I just want to find out what's going on. I want to keep in touch with it. Well, put it down for 20 minutes and spend that 20 minutes with God. It would be fasting of technological technology for 20 minutes and take that time. And talk with the Lord. Better than that, how about taking a couple of hours and get alone with the Lord? Get alone with the Lord and listen for the voice of God. One of the best places, I will tell you, one of the best places to do that is up on the loop road. You can see the city. It is a beautiful view and you can get away with the Lord. Go to the park. Spend some time at the park. Crazy as this may seem, walk through the cemetery. Nobody will bother you there. It's quiet. It's very quiet. Get alone with God and listen for God's voice. 
And five is simplicity. When you're not taking a gadget vacation, Google simplicity. Google simplify. Declutter. Gordon McDonald says, one sign that your life is out of control. I don't think I have that on here. I've got to wait just a second to see if it catches up with me. That was the adoration. Confession. I didn't give those to you. I didn't. Nope. Okay. So, Gordon McDonald says, one sign that your life is out of control is when every horizontal surface of your life is cluttered. He says, I'm not just talking about physical clutter like you find in your workspace or your bathroom counter. You may suffer from digital clutter. He says, I read a, a website on simplifying that says Americans suffer from digital pack rattery. That's a tendency to have kept hundreds of contacts, apps, Facebook, Twitter, that distract you from the most important things of life. Every one of us has too much clutter. I'm not talking about the basement of the church, and I'm not talking about my house. I'm talking about our, our clutter that we have in our minds, and when we give it away, we open up the space. Oh, boy, I hear what you're all saying. It, hey, it is. It's getting better. It's getting better. I got rid of one thing last week. It really is cool. But declutter, don't we? Aren't we just filled with all this stuff that's going on in our mind? Don't you want to breathe a little deeper? Give it away. So before we leave this subject of our soul, there's something even more important to that. Healthy soul, yes, but there are two types of people in this room right now. There's a saved soul and there's an unsaved soul. And that's the most important, that a soul be saved. Mark 8.36. Let's see if I can get back over here to this. Mark 8.36 says, What good is it? For a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul. Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? When you lose something, you can normally get it back. We've all experienced when, you know, we've moved from one house, we'll move into another house, build a house. We can, there's all sorts of things that you can do. You lose your car keys, you can get your car keys back. You know, you can, you, you, what is that? The, they say if you play a Western song, country Western song backwards, you get your wife back, you get your house back, you get your car back. You can get it back. There was a lady and a, a gentleman who got married. Isn't that an amazing thing? A lady and a gentleman got married. And, and she could not cook. Any of you guys identify that with that when you got married? Your wives couldn't cook? How many of you wives identify your husband certainly can't cook? They can't cook now. The wife was crying. She was just crying when her husband came home from work. She says, honey, what's wrong? He's, she said, I, I fixed you a batch of wonderful biscuits, and I put them on the counter. He looked at her, and he says, don't worry, baby. She, she said, I put them on the counter, and the dog got them. And he said, don't worry, baby. We can get another dog. We can, al we can always get... We can always get things, but what I'm, what I'm getting at, almost everything you lose can be, why are you all pointing at you? Poor dog, that's what I was waiting for. We can replace anything, but we can't replace our soul. We cannot replace our soul. Your soul will live on long after the sun is burned out and the stars are plucked from the sky. The Bible makes it clear that your soul will live on in heaven or in hell. Yes, I believe in hell. Hell for me is a total separation from God. Lake of fire, total damnation. Word of God says it. I, don't, I can't pull what fit. Oh, I don't like that about hell. I'm, I'm not going to use that. No, let's talk about the love of God. What loving God would send his children to hell? God clearly tells us. 
I want to bless you. I don't want to send you to hell. I'm giving you every opportunity to accept my son as your Lord and Savior. And so, too, he gives us one more opportunity every single time we're together. Jesus told us in Luke 16, there's no question what happens to the soul. Lazarus and, and the rich young ruler, and Lazarus is, as it says, in the bosom of Abraham, and, and the rich ruler is in hell. And obviously he can see in heaven. I think one of the biggest things that really speaks to me is the messages I speak on salvation. I pray that people who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can they see what happens? Would they think about this message, the last part of this message, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will go to hell. You'll have eternal life, but it'll be eternal damnation. And so every time I speak, I've got to share with people, if you don't know Jesus Christ, why not? Why not now? Why not ask Jesus into your heart? What are you fighting? What are you... What are you running from? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know he's living, whatever the world may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. I hear, see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. So I believe that, guys and gals. I believe that, and I will proclaim that. And the world wants to make, you don't need Jesus. You just need money. Oh, yeah. We all see hearses pulling, you know, trucks of gold behind them to the graveyard. I'm not going to tell you the joke about the guy who was buried and three guys owed him money. Two guys brought him $100,000 and put it in cash. I guess I am going to tell you about it. The third guy came and owed him $100,000 and put a check in there. We're not going to take this with us. It's going to slow. It'll, you'll get it eventually. It's... We're not taking anything with us, guys and gals. Only what's done for Christ is going to last. All the work we've done on this building, all the many hours, the stuff we're going to do out of the amphitheater, the things that we do for the plays, it's all going to be gone. But my prayer is, is that if a soul is one for the kingdom of God and snatched out of the flames of hell, then all that stuff's been worth it. Amen? All that stuff's been worth it. Well, let's take a look at what the scripture says. The rich man also died and was buried in hell where he was in torment. And he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. He says, Lazarus sat at your gate. You had no time for him. You want to fulfill your wants and your desires and all those things now. And now Lazarus is receiving his reward and you're receiving your reward. He says, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I've got five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Guys and gals, we're being given a mandate. That mandate is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and use words if necessary. Be a light. Be an example. Have the mind of Christ. Don't let this, this world weigh you down. We are in this together. I love doing life with you guys. And some of us have good days and some of us have bad days. Some of us lean on each other harder than we lean on others. And then we, the ones who are being leaned on, lean on those who, who leaned on us. We are in this together. And we need each other. Why do we need each other? Because the Holy Spirit dwells in the temples of each one of you. For there is no longer a church for God's people. There's a temple that the Holy Spirit, you, dwells in. You are the church. You are the church. We feed our souls by this word of God. A little girl walked home from school every day, every day. And she went through the cemetery. And as she walked through the cemetery, she loved it because it was quiet and it was uh, peaceful. And she heard the birds singing. And she'd, she'd lay down on the ground and she'd just watch the clouds go by. 
She'd sometimes read the names on the tombstones of the people who had passed on. One day, one of her friends was with her. And they were going through the cemetery. He said, why do you go through this place to get home from school? She says, I love it. It's on my way home. And that's what this is. We're on our way home, guys and gals. Death is not an escape. Death is, death is a tool that God allows to bring us home. And in this time that we've got here, it's going to go fast. I said this earlier to you young people. I, I had a 13-year-old nephew who felt life was not worth living, and he took his life at 13 years old. And I had to ask myself, what causes a 13-year-old to not feel that there's any hope or, or, or anything to live forward to? There are people in their lives who say, I'm just going to stop my life and get off the train and not do any more. That's not what God wants you to do. God wants you to live to the fulfillment of his purpose in this life, in the time that he has given you to do it, and to be the man and woman of God of effectiveness. Speaking life and hope and promise. And the enemy wants to speak of death and, and, and deception into our lives. Who are you? Are you a child of God? Do you have the hope of God in you? Do you stand on the promises that he'll never leave you nor forsake you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for our sins? Shed his blood. There's a redemption of the forgiveness of our sins. If you believe that. Don't keep it to yourself. Got to tell somebody. The man said, got to tell somebody what Jesus did for me, what Jesus is doing for me, and what Jesus will do for me. Feed your soul, guys and gals. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of a time where we can gather in the word and we can partake of a wonderful meal together. Father, thank you for your word this morning. I love you, Lord. It just draws and, and just brings the emotion in my heart as we gather together. Because I take very seriously this time together. My brothers and sisters, time is precious. And I never want to waste their time. I pray, Lord, that when they go away from this service, they sense that they've been in the very presence of God, not because of the great orientation of, 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 of the orator that I am, Father, but that what your Holy Spirit speaks to them and that, that they can take away from this place just even a nugget of wisdom, insight, courage, boldness, knowledge that they genuinely feel they've been in the presence of God and they allow themselves to enter into your presence, Father. But God, this time together as family really prepares us for the next week as we go through a new day and a new week, which turns into a month, which turns into a year. And the older I get, the faster it goes, Lord. And I know I've got a limited amount of time. So I pray, Father, that my brothers and sisters can hear my heart today. I want them to be as strong as they possibly can be, Father. I want them to be soldiers of the cross, ambassadors for the kingdom, servants of Almighty God, carrying every bit of armor that you give to them, Father, for the enemy tries to destroy them. Carrying that sword of truth, that breastplate of righteousness, their feet shod with the readiness to do the work of Pray, Father, that they go from this place challenged and encouraged and uplifted, saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord with my brothers and sisters. So for that one who may have come today discouraged or feeling bad or feeling upset, I pray, Father, that there is a, a replacement of joy through the scriptures in their hearts, that the worry is kicked out and the fear is kicked out and the desires are kicked out of this world and that say I am a child of God I am a child of God I have washed my robes in the cleansing fountain I am a child of God 
And for that one who may be here or listening by the airwaves today, Father, if they don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I just invite them to pray this very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Take residency. I surrender my spirit to you just as I am without one plea I come before you today asking you to be my Lord and Savior and praying that prayer I believe the angels of heaven rejoice as you become a child of God but it just doesn't become an easy road in fact it gets harder this is a disclaimer gets harder. Why would I want to know Jesus then? Because he's walking with you. And when you get to the other side of this life, he'll say, well done. Good and faithful servant. Enter into your time with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us as you do and for your precious word this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Sing this song with me, would you? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dear in the light. Stand with me. Let's just sing one more time, okay? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dear. Father God, we just thank you for this time today, this timely message for the world. Father God, we just believe that the time has to be growing short. But Lord, it doesn't matter how short because we don't know about tomorrow. As individuals, we don't know. So Father God, touch our hearts, lift our spirits, Help us to be joyful in the Lord. Bring us together as the family of God. In Jesus' name. Blessings upon you. May you have a, just a, a wonderful week. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and give you peace until we're all together again. Hope to see you tonight for the viewing of The Chosen. Please uh, head downstairs. There's lots of breads. And Lots of pastries and everything down there for you. Blessings.